What's up guys, Ghost here with some more Battlefield 3. Today I wanted to take a little look over the 17 minute trailer that was released a few days ago. Now it's not really going to be much of an in-depth analysis, so this video certainly isn't going to be 17 minutes long. Rather I'm just going to be going over a few of the things that stood out for me and that I thought really hit home in this video. So first of all, really awesome choice of music. Bonnie Tyler, who doesn't love Bonnie Tyler, right? However, I can't really say the same for the short trailer that was about one minute long. Rihanna? I mean, seriously? I hope I don't offend any Rihanna fans out there, but to me, Rihanna is not very Battlefield. So one thing I will say is that the character animations in this game, I feel, have been improved upon since Battlefield 3. It looked really nice. There's one scene where you sort of run into your captain um, at the start of the video when they're going around this building. And he tries to close a door, and he actually sort of tries to close the door without looking at it, and misses the door, and then he has to look at the door and actually, you know, go and take it and close it. And that's, I feel that's really human, you know, putting those little touches. That's a uh, big, big attention to detail. And also the way the different characters in the game behave, you can really tell that that guy is the captain, and the other guy that you run into... He's just some underling, he's just a private or whatever, and you know, he's not in charge, he's kind of scared. And I feel that they, that really comes across well in the game, you can really read how the characters are feeling based on their actions. Now, the world looks really great, absolutely beautiful, the textures are really lifelike. You know, when you look at the paint flaking off that door when they're walking around this building at the start, or the graffiti paint on some of the walls, it really looks like you could just reach out and touch it. When you can see individual leaves on a tree, I mean, that's got to be the sign of a good engine, right? The lighting looks really great. Reflections are fantastic. The sun lens flare effect, that still seems to be there. Um, but from what I can tell, I think it's been somewhat reduced. I think it was in Level Cap's video, he compared it to Battlefield 3. Um, there's definitely a lot less effect from the sun. Now, I feel this effect is nice because it's just one of those things that makes Battlefield unique and makes it different from other games like Call of Duty, but I do feel in Battlefield 3 it is a little bit overkill, so if they have indeed reduced it for Battlefield 4, then I feel like that's definitely a step in the right direction. Now one thing that I and a lot of other people have noticed is that there doesn't seem to be any suppression. However, this is, as you guys know, a single player campaign trailer. So it doesn't really tell us anything about multiplayer. I mean, we can always speculate, but at the end of the day, there are things that are only in single player and not in multiplayer, so we can't really know for, for, for sure until we find out some more information what's going to be in multiplayer and what is going to be in single player. Uh, a lot of people said, whoa, no suppression, but if you look in Battlefield 3's single player campaign, you can be under heavy fire and there's little to no suppression there. Yet in multiplayer, suppression plays a big role. And I must say that if they decide to actually remove suppression from multiplayer in Battlefield 4, I feel that's not good. Now I know a lot of people hate the suppression effect, but just as it is with the sun flare and the lighting in the game, I feel it's just one more thing that makes it unique when compared to other games like Call of Duty. So maybe they should reduce it a little bit, but getting rid of suppression altogether, I don't think they're going to do that. I think this is just a single player campaign. I mean, it's not even in beta testing yet, so it could be that they just simply haven't implemented the effect into the campaign yet for all we know. So they did show us, however, a few new game mechanics. Now, as with everything else in this video, we can't tell if this is going to be implemented into multiplayer, and I think it's fair to say that most of us are probably excited for the multiplayer information, what's going to be in multiplayer. So, yeah, one of these things was the 45 degree iron sight on the weapon that you can switch to on the fly. So that gives you the option to have, as it was in the video, an ACOG sight and an iron sight at the same time. Now, is this going to be in multiplayer? Probably. I mean... I think they obviously showed us that in the single player campaign video to get us excited and to show people that there were some new features coming to the game. And if that's going to be a multiplayer, that is going to be awesome because everyone usually runs around with iron sights or red dot sight. So giving you the ability to now put on an iron sight and have a long range sight, you know, it just offers up a little bit of choice. Would you want to run with an iron sight and a long range scope or do you just want to not bother and just go with a red dot sight, you know, old school style? There also seems to be a new spot mechanic. We couldn't really tell from the video whether this was just spotting 
or whether it was a command towards your squad, um, it very much looked like he sort of spotted a big group of enemies, and at the same time sort of told his his uh, squad to concentrate fire while he went around and flank. So I'm not really sure if this is just a spot mechanic. Lots of people have been saying, oh, so now you're not going to be able to spam the spot button here. You can't spam Q or whatever the button is for spotting on PS3 and Xbox. You're going to have to actually do a small animation. So you can't just go spamming it whenever you like. And I must say, maybe this is a good idea. So it's, it's going to encourage players to spot. Um, maybe that's the trade-off, you know. It takes a small animation in order to spot, but instead of just spotting one enemy, you're actually going to spot in a sort of wide arc, and it's going to spot a group of enemies in a certain area. But once again, all speculation, this, you know, mechanic couldn't even exist in multiplayer. For all we know, they might have the spot mechanics exactly the same in multiplayer as they do for Battlefield 3. Now, there were some new weapons showcased as well. Um, as far as I can see, the weapon he's using in the trailer is the M16, or maybe the M4. Can't really tell with that, but he's using it with an ACOC, sky, uh, ACOC sight. Rather. He also brings out a semi-automatic grenade launcher with six shots. Now, uh, it looks pretty beast, but let's just hope it's going to be somehow balanced for multiplayer mode. If it actually makes it into multiplayer mode. I'm actually wondering whether I want it there or not. I might be better off without it. But at least for the campaign, it looks to be a lot of fun. Some people were wondering, whoa, does this mean you can carry three weapons now? Because, you know, he has a shotgun, he has the M16 or the M4, he has a grenade launcher. So people are starting to wonder, like, is this just campaign? Or are they increasing the amount of weapons that you can carry in multiplayer now as well? Because, as you guys know, it's pretty much just a main rifle. And a secondary, and then your gadgets. So maybe the grenade launcher counts as, counts as a gadget. Um, maybe you can carry any two weapons in the campaign, so that's why it has an M16 and a shotgun, rather than an M16 and a pistol. I don't know, I suppose we'll find out. I'm guessing they're going to keep mechanics of those sorts exactly the same as in Battlefield 3. They're probably not going to touch those. Now, as for other weapons that are in the game, somebody actually noticed when the building that they're trying to get on top of to get in the helicopter to be rescued, that collapses and they slide down past some enemy soldiers. He shoots them on the way and as he slides past you get this split second glimpse of part of the UI popping up and saying you know hold R to pick up and if you pause on it you can see that it's the AEK so we know that the AEK is going to be back in the game that personally pleases me because that's one of my favorite weapons as I'm sure it is a lot of you guys out there so yeah one little thing I forgot to mention about the visuals, and that was the explosions. Oh my god, do the explosions look that good. I mean, look at that, man. If the explosions look this good in campaign, I really hope they're going to be just as nice in multiplayer mode. I mean, this game looks freaking sweet, and seriously, I've just upgraded my computer. Now I'm starting to wonder, am I going to have to upgrade my computer again before Battlefield 4 comes out? I fucking hope not. Now I noticed they've made quite a drastic change to the UI, it's no longer got the sort of blue tinty look that it had with Battlefield 3, and it's sort of more greyish look now, and it really reminds me of the UI in Bad Company 2, I think it was. On top of that, they've made the whole assembly of your weapon and your hands and everything, what you can see your soldier carrying, they've made that somewhat smaller, and that's allowed them to make the ammo counter and other parts of the UI a little bit bigger, so that's a nice change. So all in all, the campaign looks pretty damn nice. It's very nice looking, as I've already said. There's lots of drama to be had, and I think everybody's come to expect that from the Battlefield campaign, you know, Battlefield 3. That was really the, well, there were campaigns in Bad Company 1 and 2, but the Battlefield 3 campaign is a sort of very serious campaign. Bad Company 1 and 2 were kind of more sort of jokey, satirical take on a campaign, whereas Battlefield 3 was very serious, lots of drama, and I think everybody's come to expect that now, so Battlefield 4 looks to be much of the same. You know, there's driving parts with helicopters chasing after you and all that kind of stuff. Female characters as well as China have been pretty much confirmed by this trailer. You can see in the end there is a Chinese female woman. So, you know, that kind of says it all. There's lots of mention of Shanghai and China, lots of clues there. So I think that's, that's pretty much confirmed as of now. One thing I really thought was strange is, at the end of the trailer, 
they're kind of sinking down in the jeep, or well, the jeep is sinking down, and the soldier, I think he's called Ricker, your character, he's sort of swimming up to the surface of the water, and you can hear this phone call going on between, you know, what appears to be your superiors, some generals or something, and it really reminds me of the Bourne series, um, you know, they start talking about the asset and stuff like that. I don't know why, I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. That's something I noticed. But, um, yeah, anyway guys, what do you think of this trailer? I'm about done um, conveying my thoughts on it, so let me know down below, what do you think of it? What stood out for you? I'm sure I've missed mentioning some important things, um, so if I have and you've picked up on that, definitely let me know down below so everybody else doesn't miss out on it. So that's me done guys, as always if you enjoyed the video feel free to subscribe, like and all that good stuff, that is the best way that you can help me out. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you soon for another video. Cheers!